Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, we're going to be preparing and fitting a brand new chip breaker to a blade. Hope you enjoy. So when it comes to a brand new chip breaker, obviously there are machining marks and the better quality ones are obviously just that, better quality, so there's less work to be done. Now what I've got here is a new blade and chip breaker set. If you saw my sharpening video, you'll already know that. Uh, I've got this chip breaker here that's never been used so we need to prepare the edge so we can get a nice clean fit against the back of the blade and we also need to prepare and smooth out the front of the chip breaker to allow the chips to come up over it nice and even. We would normally uh, have a nice sharp edge along here which means that this back flat section here would be slightly undercut. Now we want to refine that using a stone. In this case I have to say that you have to use a diamond stone for this. They're the right thickness to be for this process. You could hang it off a water stone and bring the angle down, but it's not going to be as accurate as just doing it with a stone like I have here. So the first thing I've done here is I've removed that screw. You don't want to lose that, obviously, because we won't be able to put it back on the blade if we don't. So put that aside in a nice safe spot. So the reason I suggest this is you bring the blade in like this onto a diamond stone, Rest it on the blade like that, and that gives you about the right undercut angle for the front here. Now, there are a few YouTubers that I've seen do this process. Rob Kozman is the main one, and you can do the same process whether it's a vintage chip breaker like this or one of the new modern ones. The process is identical. So, the process here is, is that you actually keep this within about 5mm of the edge, and you work it back like this. You can see how the dirt from the machining is coming off and we're getting that polished metal. So what we're looking for is that polished line right along the very edge. It doesn't matter if it's along the back, as long as it's on that very tipped edge right there. So you can sort of pinch your fingers up the front here, just to try and guide it. But you don't want your fingers to get pulled on the edge of that stone, because that'll hurt. Now a lot of these vintage chip breakers take a little bit more work, even the new ones, because the machining is not as good quality as the modern stuff. So now you can see here, we've almost got that right along. There's a little slither here. Now, I just want to take that a little bit further, just so it's a little bit longer, and then I know that I've got a nice smooth edge right the way along. So now we've prepared that edge along here, that we know is smooth, which will be the mating surface that comes here. We need to prepare the outer edge here. We'll remove any burr that it formed there from us flattening this. And we'll also just polish this area out. What I'm going to be doing here is just using the diamond stones for this. I have the full set here, obviously, that I've mentioned before. So I'm just going to go ahead and use these just to show you what this work would be done with the diamond stones. It's a little bit less messy than the water stones, a little bit less messing around. So I'll bring in here and we'll go through how I'm going to smooth out this, the front of this chip breaker. So for this process, I'm going to run through all the grits. So the stones I've got here, I've got a 400, a 600, and a 1200 in the diamond stones. I couldn't get an 800 because they didn't make one, so I got a 600. Obviously in my water stones, I have a 400, an 800, and a 1200. Somewhere around those three grits I find works pretty well. The first step is to work on the 400 grit and then we'll just move through the rest of the grids. So, I'm going to wet the stone. Now, we bring it in like this, and we're feeling until we've got a match. Now, this has a nice loop on it, so it fits quite nicely. So you can actually feel when it's pushed right down. So you're getting it sitting flat there, and then you're just lifting it a touch, so you're right on that tip. You can get three fingers on it like that. Just moving it back and forwards. holding it on that angle. Now I know this is a little bit awkward, but you can see that we're working along just here, grazing all of that up. So we're going to wait until we get right to that edge before we move on. Another way you can do it is come in like this, and you're sort of moving it up and down through the round, because obviously it's curved, so you want to move up and down like this. And you can use your 
fingers here just to keep it down. One finger I found worked quite well on the middle. Clean. And we can feel that there's actually a burr right along that edge that we flattened before. So we know that we've taken this right to that edge. So my next step is then we continue to run on that round a little bit just to make sure that this is all smoothed out back here. You can see that that's come right the way through pretty much now. So that's all pretty smooth. So now I just move through the grids. And once we get here, before I work on the 1200 grid, I'll bring this back in here like this and remove that burr in the same motion that we did originally. In here. I don't normally use honing compound, but I have a bit here, so I'm just going to use it for this because it does help to shine the, the chip breaker out a little bit. See, this is starting to polish out nicely. So now that we've prepared the chip breaker, the blade was sharpened in the last video if you've seen that, it's time to bring them together and put them together the way they're meant to be. The first step is that we have to put that screw that was in the back here back into the chip breaker. Assuming I haven't lost it, you don't want to lose them. And I'll bring you in and show you the process for bringing them together so you don't damage the chip breaker or the blade. The correct way to bring the blade and the chip breaker together so they don't get damaged is to bring it in 90 degrees like this, have the screw and slide it up, make sure the screw is loose enough so you can get the chip breaker on the top of the blade so you can just loosen it off a little bit while it's here. And then you slide it around and then you proceed to slide the blade up to the cutting edge. Now there's a lot of information out there about what the correct distance is, how close, not far enough, depending on what you're doing, the, the distance from the edge of the blade can vary. Now for the most part for me, I just bring it up about a oh, millimeter, millimeter and a half from the edge and then do it up. So if we look just here, it's quite a thin area there. I snug that screw up, I then grab well, a screwdriver or the, the lever cap because they're designed for it. And we do that screw up until it doesn't want to do up anymore. So now I've brought that together, it should be right, we should be all done. Now before we go ahead and put this into the plane, I'm just going to show you one check you can do to ensure that you've got a nice even mating surface there. So the trick we have here is that you want to look in through this gap up to a light. Now you can do both sides and you're looking through that gap to see if you see any light coming along this front edge where they're supposed to be meeting. Now if there's no light seen under there then chances are you've got a nice tight connection there and you won't get any problems. So now we've done that check, we'll go ahead, put it into the plane, and we'll take some shavings to see how well we did. Lay the assembly in, rock it side to side, make sure it's fully seated. Sometimes you'll have to loosen that screw off to get your lever cap to fit properly. Nice snug fit there. We'll quickly sight the blade, I'll, I'll go through this in more depth in another video. I'm just getting it so it's sitting re relatively parallel in there. So I've just got a piece of timber in here. And we'll see how well we take some shavings. So, there you have it folks. 
That's how you prepare a chip breaker, whether it's a brand new one or a vintage one, the process is still the same. Now, as you can see, we got some really nice shavings down here, which proves that we got a nice, tight, even and well fitted chip breaker. So if you like the video, please consider liking and subscribing, commenting below. It really does help the channel out. And if you'd like to support me a little bit further, please consider checking out my Patreon page where you get a few behind the scenes contents depending on what level you decide to join at. Bye for now.